Hey, Cryptizens. Tonight's stories. USDN DPEGs. UK government moves towards stablecoins. Gensler says you need to be protected. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is April 4th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for this podcast is Tex. And together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you news stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. MetaMask token. Did you hear about that? This isn't really news, but it's new. It seems consensus, the owner of MetaMask, hit a valuation at the $7 billion mark. That's after they raised $450 million in their latest funding round. They're really making their mark as a major player in Web3. In a recent statement, Consensus talked about how MetaMask is used by many people for more than just hodling crypto. They collect NFTs, they join DAOs, maybe they stake or lend or borrow from a DeFi protocol. They said that the US, the Philippines, Brazil and Germany, and Nigeria are some of the most active markets for MetaMask. Joe Lubin is the CEO of Consensus and the co-founder of Ethereum. According to him, MetaMask is pushing, quote, progressive decentralization and focusing on security and improving the kind of clunky interface. I mean, really, expand view? How does that have anything to do with what actually happens? Anyway, they're also working on a DAO. Lubin said, quote, there is a DAO that is being formed right now in the context of MetaMask. It will not own MetaMask, but it will enable the creation of new parts of MetaMask that can be funded. No further details were given, but that really shows that MetaMask is planning on coming out with their own token. These rumors may finally be coming true. Now, before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $2.15 trillion. It's down 0.8% since yesterday. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 0.41%, Ethereum up 0.04%, Tether, Binance Coin down 0.66%, and USDC. The global NFT market cap is up over 10.16 billion. It's up 0.14%. According to CoinMarketCap.com, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Cyber Brokers up 0.1%, CloneX down 0.04%, Izuki down 0.05%, Mutant Apes up 0.02%, and World of Women Galaxy up 0.14%. Now, keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. USDN DPEGs. When you look at a stablecoin's chart, and that dollar-based stablecoin is no longer worth a dollar, you've got a problem. That's what Waves-powered Neutrino Dollar, USDN, faced today. USDN got delinked from the peg. The price dropped 15%. Now, that $1 stablecoin was only redeemable for $0.85. That is an issue. Okay, so one thing to know is... USDN is an algorithm-based stablecoin. It's backed by Waves on the Neutrino protocol. Now, at one point, it hit actually as low as $0.82 on the dollar. And then, unsurprisingly, market capitalization dropped. It dove from a year high to date of $960 million down to $824 million. That's 14-15%. What's really interesting, though, is how it happened even though Neutrino claims that they have what's called over collateral. The total value locked of their Waves coin is higher than the total Neutrinos minted. That serves as what's called a backing ratio. And as of today, the fourth, their backing ratio was 2.62. That means out of every 100 Neutrino dollars minted, there's $262 of Waves locked away. And that's even with the 35% plus price drop in the last few days. And then this is where things get nasty. Because you see, Wave's price dropped from a record high of $64 on March 31st. 
it didn't touch bottom until it hit $47 today. Their RSI, the Relative Strength Index, that shot up over 70, which is a classic symbol that an asset has been overbought and will see some selling action soon. Now, they soon faced criticism as at least one synonymous analyst accused Waves of artificially inflating their price. What they claimed is that Waves pumped their value 750% by using USDN as collateral to buy USDC on the virus platform, then using that money to buy Waves, then converting that Waves to USDN, and then you use that USDN to repeat the process by redeploying to the virus finance pool to borrow more USDC. If that happens, I can see where a Waves price crash could push USDN into insolvency. Sasha Ivanov is the founder of Waves, and they're not buying it. They denied allegations that they were manipulating the market on April 3rd. They noted that you can't move markets with over a billion dollars daily volume by shuffling a few million around. That said, he does have an opinion on who is responsible, and it's a doozy. He's accusing Alameda Research of launching a campaign, and that campaign, quote, fueled by a crowd of paid trolls, is trying to get people to short waves. And for those who don't know, Alameda Research is headed by Sam Bankman-Fried. Now, yesterday, Sunday, Ivanov submitted a new governance proposal, one that is not terribly popular, to be honest. That proposal was, quote, in order to prevent price manipulation and protect the ecosystem, I propose to temporarily reduce the liquidation threshold for waves and USDN borrowing to 0.1%. I also propose to limit the maximum borrow annual percentage rate to be 40%. Crypto Twitter is not having it. They're calling it a rug pull, saying it's an attempt to change the system to work in favor of the insiders. And there's fallout, of course. According to DeFi Llama, the total value locked in USDN dropped from $1.26 billion to $945 million. And that drop only took three days. And honestly, this is really, really poor timing to be completely honest. Stablecoins are a hot topic in Washington, D.C. right now. There's a strong love them or hate them dichotomy forming. And the last thing that this space needs right now is anyone throwing any more uncertainty at the validity of stablecoins. Because CDBCs are a really poor substitute. And speaking of stablecoins, UK government moves toward stablecoins. The UK's Economic and Finance Ministry has got some work to do. They've said that they intend to amend their financial regulatory framework. They're going to incorporate stablecoins as a means of payment. John Glenn is the UK's Economic Treasury Secretary. He said, quote, If crypto technologies are going to be a big part of the future, then we, the UK, want to be in and in on the ground floor. In an announcement on Monday, her Majesty's Treasury said some stable coins have the potential to become a, quote, widespread means of payment for UK consumers. This comes after a period of consultation with various groups and organizations and individuals and universities that started January last year. The UK's Treasury said it intends to take the necessary legislative steps to bring stable coins into their regulatory framework, quote, primarily by amending existing electronic money and payments legislation. And this is a group effort. It's not just the Treasury. The Finance Ministry is playing a role here. They said amending the regulatory framework to include stablecoins is just a part of it. There is an entire, quote, package of measures aimed at incorporating digital assets and blockchain tech into the UK. And they're going to have something called a crypto asset engagement group. The purpose for this group is, quote, to work more closely with the industry. And they've got a bunch of other duties. They'll be looking for a way to set up their tax system to be encouraging the growth of the crypto market. They'll also be establishing a financial market infrastructure sandbox. Rishi Sunak is the chancellor of the Exchequer. They said, quote, 
It's my ambition to make the UK a global hub for crypto asset technology, and the measures we've outlined today will help to ensure firms can invest, innovate, and scale up in this country. This is part of our plan to ensure the UK financial services industry is always at the forefront of technology and innovation. They also ask the Royal Mint to create an NFT, and they want that NFT ready by the summer. John Glenn said the government will be reviewing how crypto lending works in the UK tax system. They'll be considering things like whether foreign investors would be exempt for UK taxes for crypto transactions conducted on their behalf under the investment manager exemption. They'll also be the one standing up and running the crypto asset engagement group. Now, these are some really crypto positive moves coming out of Britain lately. You know, their FCA, they announced that they've extended their temporary registration de uh, deadline. Back in March, the Bank of England and a group of regulators were working on crypto regulations, and they specifically noted at the time that they welcomed the Treasury's proposals for getting stablecoins into the regulatory framework. Gensler says you need to be protected. Yes, that's right. The SEC chair said retail investors need to be protected. He said, quote, there's no reason to treat the crypto market differently just because different technology is used. So Gary Gensler, chair of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, he said the same protections that cover Traditional investors should also protect people who invest in the crypto market. So he was giving some remarks on Monday. He was at the Penn Law Capital Markets Association annual conference. And he said that he directed staff to start looking at getting crypto platforms registered. He's talking about them being subject to the same framework as the exchanges. He also said that they could be looking at addressing the lack of clarifying regulations in the crypto space, he'd have them consider how to register platforms, quote, where the trading of securities and non-securities is intertwined. Also in question is whether retail crypto investors should be getting the same protections as those in traditional markets. He said, quote, crypto may offer new ways for entrepreneurs to raise capital and for investors to trade but we still need investor and market protection. We already have robust ways to protect investors trading on platforms. And we have robust ways to protect investors when entrepreneurs want to raise money from the public. We ought to apply these same protections in the crypto markets. And I do get that. $14 billion were stolen from exchanges just last year. Also looking at trading platforms, some of them can act as market makers. They can trade for their own accounts against their customers. So that's a potential conflict of interest. It's not something you're allowed to do on the New York Stock Exchange, for example. The question is whether that's acceptable in crypto or not. Do those functions need to be separated to a completely different organization? Another question. He wants them to explore custody. Is it appropriate to separate platforms out based on whether they offer custody services or not. Perhaps that calls for a different registration environment. Now, during his time at the SEC, Gensler has often urged crypto projects to come in. His position is that if they're offering securities, they need to come in and get registered. This would ultimately result in more protection for investors. On the other hand, the lack of regulatory clarity has been the subject of much criticism from the crypto industry. And frankly, this lack of clarity comes from the fact that there are multiple agencies offering their interpretations of things, including the SEC, the CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. And that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Do you have any questions or comments on tonight's show? Tell me what you think send me an email at nick at cryptooverniter.com. That's nick at cryptooverniter.com. Oh, and check out my other podcast, Crypto in 5 Minutes, 
we're up to 39 educational podcasts, five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And as always, may peace reign.